looking to unique grammatical features of that language. We're looking for what the words meant in that day. We're looking for the type of literature or genre that it is, and we're looking for parallel passages because the best interpreter of an inspired text is an inspired text. So six areas that I can bring evidence from. Now this is meant to make the history of the author and the whole writing of the author the focus of my interpretation. Now people say to me all the time, well the Holy Spirit told me. All right, let's just deal with that. Thank God the Holy Spirit speaks to you. I mean, I'm having no problems with that. And if you believe the Holy Spirit has interpreted a text to you in a way then you must obey what you believe the Spirit said to you. But I don't have to obey it unless it's clearly taught in Scripture. Amen? You can't put your insights on me because your insights are not authority. Now, they may be meaningful, sincere for you, and you must walk in the light you have. But other Christians don't have to walk in the light you have. Because nobody said that your interpretation is God's interpretation. Amen? Pretty weak, but... <laughs> these, these kind of areas provide insight for a rational interpretation and evaluation of the interpretation of others. I hear some sermons that are very clever. I hear some sermons I agree with, but the text they got it from has nothing to do with what they just said. And I have no way to evaluate that. They say, well, I prayed about it. This is what God told me. I need a way to critique who I hear who is speaking in God's name. And that's true for a local church because I guarantee you when pastors come through here, they do not have the same emphasis in theology. And you've got to know your Bible well enough to protect yourself from sincere speakers. You get 13 Baptist preachers up here, you've got 35 opinions on most subjects which means you must know what you believe and why. I think we're guilty of saying if the guy wears a black suit and preaches behind a pulpit and came from a credible seminary, it must be true. I know some real jerks with the seminary with me. This is a quote from Garden Fee. A Bible that can mean anything means nothing. It's like a wax figure. If one can put the nose over here, one can put the nose over here, one can put the nose up here, if it can mean anything, it means nothing. There's got to be some rational, textual, historical, contextual, lexical, grammatical evidence of why I think it means that. Then I've got to give you the dignity of saying, pray about this, read it, and let your Holy Spirit filter cause you to walk in the light you have. It is not a method for scholars. Holy spit. We have allowed scholars to take away the Bible that was given to us and not them. They do not call it Koine Greek for nothing. This is not written in the language of the academy. This is written in the language of the street. This is the second language of commerce of the Greco-Roman world. It was written for the common person. That's who God intends to speak with it. Now, thank God for scholars. They help us in, in technical areas. But I guarantee you, how many PhDs do you think you need to interpret the Bible? That's the problem. We begin to be intimidated. If I got 13 PhDs up here in the same area, they wouldn't agree on anything. Human knowledge is not the key to Bible study. You... The Bible and the Holy Spirit are priority in Bible study. You say, well, what if I get it wrong? Join the club. We have to walk in the light we have, open to more light from Scripture and the Spirit. We have to love one another even if we're different. I hope you'll read Romans 14, 1 through 15, 13 on the weaker and stronger brother, and both of them are in this church. They're in every church. It is not a message, method for scholars, but for the common man, faith-seeking understanding. However, difference in languages, culture, require research. 
It must be interpreted in light of the original author's purpose, historical setting, and literary context. People always say to me, are you telling me that I've got to know history to interpret the Bible? That's exactly what I'm telling you. That's exactly what I'm saying to you. Because you don't know anything about a Jewish wedding feast on your own. You don't know how they raised cattle, how they cooked bread, how they dressed. None of us know that because we're Americans in the 20th and 21st century. But this book is 2,000 years old in a Greco-Roman first century, or if Old Testament, much older than that. Of course the Bible is not the morning newspaper. Of course we've got to do a little study to get ourselves back in the historical setting of the day. If the original author's intent is the key to Bible interpretation, if he really is the only inspired person, the logic of it is, we've got to try to put ourselves in the place of the original hearers. It just seems so logical to me. This is called the common sense method of interpreting anything that's written. Anything. Interpretation is a focused attempt to use the same procedures done unconsciously in ordinary human communication through written text. It involves an understanding of... Now, you me stop for a minute. I've said this before. I'll just reiterate quickly. I believe that part of the image of God is our ability to communicate verbally. That's why the Bible talks about creation with a spoken word. That's why Isaiah 55 says, Eleven, his word does not go out void without accomplishing his purpose. That's why Jesus is called the word of God. We must be able to communicate to other rational, normal human beings what we believe and why. So, when you read a newspaper, you, your mind, that wonderful gift from God, damaged though it may be in the fall, you know immediately, within a sentence or two, this is humor, this is sarcasm, this is an editorial comment, this is meant to be a fact-based article. You know that. And how do you know that? Because this wonderful gift 